welcome back to Cityscape. In today's episode of Secret People, we will cover Arthur C. Clarke, a British writer, futurist, and mathematician. When a discipline lacks immediate visible results to justify its investment, it needs ambassadors, people that can demonstrate its ultimate use and popularize it. Perhaps no other branch arouses more doubt than that of space. This is because its investment cost is enormous and its benefits obscure. How do you popularize space to a public that rightly feels that human problems such as hunger, housing, and sickness all have a priority? Well, thanks to the man featured in this episode, an entire generation of young Americans see astronaut as their biggest aspiration. Arthur C. Clarke is not just a space popularizer, however. Thanks to his brilliant technical foresight, our telecommunication systems have reached a level that allows seamless multimedia broadcasting. As always, let's start with a brief background. Arthur C. Clarke was born in Somerset, England on December 16, 1917. He grew up on a farm where he spent lots of time stargazing and reading American science fiction magazines. He became interested in science at a young age and built his first telescope at the age of 13. Clark's father died when he was 14, so the young man also worked to support his family. When World War II broke out, Clark, who was by then 22 years old, joined the Royal Air Force. He served from 1941 to 1946 as a radar instructor and technician. He also published his first science fiction story while in the service. After the war, Clark entered King's College in London, where he obtained a first-class degree in mathematics and physics. In 1949, he became chairman of the British Interplanetary Society, where he served several years while writing numerous fiction and non-fiction books. The dinosaurs became extinct because they didn't have a space program. And if we become extinct because we don't have a space program, it'll serve us right. Clark enjoyed an incredible successful career as a writer. His books played a particular role in the popularization of space travel. In fact, the famous German rocket scientist, von Braun, used Clark's book, The Exploration of Space, to convince Kennedy that it was possible to send a man to the moon. By 1958, Clark became heavily in demand as a commentator on science and technology. In fact, if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you have seen Clark before. He was the commentator that elegantly explained the Mendelbrot set in our episode on fractal geometry. Now we'll begin our serious exploration of the Mendelbrot set, a voyage which, in fact, could last forever and ever much longer than the lifetime of the universe. There are three major works from Clark that make him a secret person. The first major one is The Sentinel, a science fiction story Clark published in 1948 that would become the basis for Space Odyssey, one of the most influential films of all time. Clark not only wrote the story this film is based on, but also wrote the screenplay. The movie came out in 1968 and is considered an all-time classic. Clark's second notable work took place in an entirely different field. In 1956, Clark emigrated to Sri Lanka to pursue his interest in diving. That same year, he discovered the underwater ruins of an ancient temple. This made the region incredibly popular with divers, benefiting the people and businesses in a small island. In fact, the government of Sri Lanka held Clark in such high esteem that they made him a guest resident in 1975. Clark would describe his underwater explorations in several books and also set up a dive school in Sri Lanka. The last major achievement of Arthur C. Clarke is my favorite. In 1945, way before he became famous from the Space Odyssey and his underwater discovery, Clark wrote a paper titled Extraterrestrial Relays Can Rocket Stations Give Worldwide Radio Coverage? This was published in Wireless World in October 1945. In this paper, Clark described the idea of geostationary orbit. Clark's theory was that a satellite propelled to an altitude of 36,000 kilometers would make one revolution every 24 hours, 
and would therefore remain in sync with the Earth's rotation. This would remove the need for antennas to move and shift in order to track the satellite. Since the satellite moves in sync with the planet, the antenna can remain still and maintain perfect communications. Before geostationary orbit, signals would often drop as the satellite traveled further away from the antenna. This technical paper was received with much doubt from the scientific community, but 18 years later, in 1963, the first satellite was launched to the exact altitude Clark predicted, and its rotation was exactly equal to that of the Earth. At 36,000 kilometers, a satellite makes one revolution every 24 hours, staying completely in sync with the Earth's revolution. This geostationary orbit would be known as the Clark Orbit, or Clark's Belt. This satellite system is what allows the rapid multimedia broadcasting we all enjoy today, so you can think Arthur C. Clarke is a major player in this blessing. What about the city of the day after tomorrow? Say, the year 2000. I think it will be completely different. In fact, it may not even exist at all. Oh, I'm not thinking of the atom bomb and the next Stone Age. I'm thinking of the incredible breakthrough which has been made possible by developments in communications particularly the transistor and, above all, the communication satellite. These things will make possible a world in which we can be in instant contact with each other, wherever we may be, where we can contact our friends anywhere on Earth, even if we don't know their actual physical location. It will be possible in that age, perhaps only 50 years from now, for a man to conduct his business from Tahiti or Bali just as well as he could from London. In fact, if it proves worthwhile, almost any executive skill, any administrative skill, even any physical skill, could be made independent of distance. I am perfectly serious when I suggest that one day we may have brain surgeons in Edinburgh operating on patients in New Zealand. When that time comes, the whole world will have shrunk to a point. And the traditional role of the city as a meeting place for man would have ceased to make any sense. In fact, men will no longer commute. They will communicate. They won't have to travel for business anymore. They'll only travel for pleasure. I only hope that when that day comes and when the city is abolished, the whole world isn't turned into one giant suburb. Arthur C. Clarke received several awards for his prolific work as a writer, explorer, and mathematician. He won a Hugo Award for his short story, The Star. He won the Marconi Prize for Innovation in Communications and Remote Sensing in Space. He was elected to the National Academy of Engineering for conception of geosynchronous communication satellites. Lastly, he was knighted by the Queen of England in 1989 for his contributions to the British Empire. Those familiar with Clarke know him mostly for the space odyssey, but this man had much more than meets the eyes. Just hours before he died in 2008, a massive gamma ray burst reached the Earth, GRB 080319b. The burst had set a new record as the farthest object that can be seen from Earth with the naked eye. I guess even the cosmos can cry for the death of a legend. See you next time. Thanks.